The Snake River Plain is an arc-shaped depression with a concave side to the north. Covering almost a quarter of the state of Idaho, the Snake River Plain stretches about 400 miles from the Idaho-Oregon border eastward to the northwest corner of Wyoming. The width of the plain ranges from 50 to 125 miles wide. The origin of the Snake River Plain occurred during the mid to late Miocene period, about 16 million years ago, when massive volcanism started as the Yellowstone hotspot began to develop. Over time, the North American plate moved westward over the Yellowstone hotspot, cutting a swath from the Oregon-Idaho border across southern Idaho and into Yellowstone National Park. As a result of the North American continent's trip over the hotspot, an adjacent zone developed as the Earth's crust was pulled apart and thus forming a large topographic depression. This depression became the western Snake River Plain and contained Lake Idaho, a large lake covering the current area between Twin Falls and Hell's Canyon. The deposition of sediments during the existence of Lake Idaho and the cutting of the canyons as a result of the breaching of the lake's lava dam two million years ago were two major events that influenced the evolution of the Snake River Plain. The western Snake River Plain is 30 to 43 miles wide. It is a fault-bounded basin with the land surface and the rock layers dipping towards the axis of the plain. Idavada rhyolitic tufts and ash flows, 15 to 11 million years old, were discharged from now buried calderas. As a result, the plain is filled by interbedded volcanic rocks and lake bed sediments of tertiary and quaternary age. There is high gravity all over the plain. This gravity coincides well with the topographic low. The gravity high anomaly over the western plain is interpreted as indicating a thin upper crust. Seismic refraction data also support this interpretation. About 42,000 years ago in the Snake River Plain, a 40 mile long lake known as American Falls Lake formed as a result of a lava dam blocking the Snake River at Eagle Rock near present-day Idaho Falls. This lake survived for nearly 30,000 years until Utah's Lake Bonneville catastrophically spilled over the Port Neuf River and into the Snake River in an event referred to as the Bonneville Flood. As a result of the flood, American Falls Lake's lava dam breached and quickly eroded away into present-day 55-foot high American Falls. The floodwaters of Lake Bonneville at approximately 5,300,000 cubic feet per second swept down the Snake River leaving debris and sediment deposits across southern Idaho. For miles on either side of Snake River, floodwaters stripped away soils and scoured the underlining basalt bedrock. These actions resulted in the creation of Shoshone Falls, Twin Falls, Crane Falls, and Swan Falls all while cutting and deepening the gorges and canyons all along the way. The Bonifel flood waters continue to the west through Hell's Canyon. This flood is responsible for widening Hell's Canyon. However, it did not deepen it. The eastern Snake River Plain trends northeasterly and is mostly silicic, basaltic, volcanic, with very little sediments. The plain rises at the extreme east probably due to the current location of the Yellowstone hotspot. The eastern plain is generally covered by quaternary basalt flows. In the eastern Snake River Plain, the gravity anomaly of the western Snake River Plain exists here as well. The Ida Vada silicic volcanics are similar but are younger, ranging in age from 6.2 million years old to 10 million years old. At the northeast end of the plain, the last major eruption of the silicic volcanics is represented by the Yellowstone Tufts dated at 0.6 to 2 million years old. The Yellowstone Tufts are associated with caldera collapse and rhyolite flows erupted as recently as 700,000 years ago. Large rhyolite domes, 0.3 to 1.5 million years old, rise above the basalt near the axis of the plain. Abundant sediment is also found at the margins of the plain. 
gravity and topographic evidence indicate a normal fault at the northwest boundary of the plain. The topography of the Snake River Plain changes resulting from the passage of North America over the hotspot. The land rose due to thermal uplift. As the hotspot migrated to the northeast, the highland subsided due to cooling of the underlying crust and crustal loading from the eruption of post-hotspot basalts. The location of the continental divide locally corresponds to the migration of the hotspot. The topographic high produced by the hotspot produced radial drainage systems that flowed away from the volcanic center. When the Snake River Plain started, volcanism began. The continental divide was located west of its current position and local streams drained toward the Atlantic Ocean. Therefore, the sediments were transported away from the location of the volcanic high. As the continental divide moved eastward across southern Idaho, rivers that are south of the Snake River Plain began to flow south and east. Subsidence in the wake of the hotspot migration caused a drop in the base level of the Snake River Plain, which initiated headward erosion toward the modern Snake River Plain channel. Eventually, this led to stream capture and the shift of drainage to the Pacific Ocean. Another topographic feature that is related to this geologic history is the graben or rift that has experienced northeast-southwest extension and broadening in a direction that is perpendicular to the northwest elongation of the rift. About 11 to 11.7 million years ago, when rhyolite units were erupted on the uplands west of the Western Snake River Plain region and flowed northeastward into the developing rift, this is when stretching seemed to have occurred. Buck Mountain Volcano was built about 11.6 million years ago. It is a small rhyolite volcano in the Owyhee Mountains south of Homedale. A small rhyolite lava flow was extruded from the volcano, whereas the volcano's slopes are an accumulation of small blobs of splatter that coalesced into the original form. When only small volumes of rhyolitic magma are erupted, small volcanoes such as Buck Mountain are built, whereas large volumes of rhyolitic magma typically erupt along which the surface subsides to form calderas. When a basalt flow runs into a lake or river, it commonly breaks up into small blobs of lava. These blobs are called pillows. These pillows were formed tens of thousands of years ago when the basalt flow, which was spreading northward and ran into the Snake River. Clearly this happened before the river had eroded its canyon. Pillow basalts occur at many other places in the Snake River Plain. For example, they are commonly found where Lake Idaho once stood. Shoshone Falls is a rhyolite lava flow. This waterfall on the Snake River is 6 million years old. Drilling into it, they have estimated that it is about 600 feet thick. This waterfall will be sustained for a long time because rhyolite is very hard and resistant to erosion. Shoshone Falls likely was developed into its present form during the Bonneville Flood about 17,500 years ago and has not changed much since then. During the Bonneville Flood, large volumes of water poured into the Snake River Canyon in the area upstream from the city of Twin Falls. Dirks Lake is an example where you can see little plunge pools that were excavated in the basalt by water falling over the canyon rim and tearing out blocks of basalt in the process. Typically, at locations far from shore, out in the middle of large lakes, silting clay as well as volcanic ash that falls from the sky are deposited. Such is the case for the sediments of South Oriana. These layers are part of the Chalk Hills formation and were deposited during the earlier part of Lake Idaho's existence, between about 10 and 6 million years ago. These rocks are 10 to 12 million years old from a rhyolite lava flow, from which the sediments were eroded after the lake was drained. The Idaho National Laboratory describes the Snake River Plain as generally a seismic. Their hypothesis for this finding is the extensional strain on the plain is taken up by dike injection rather than normal faulting. These basalts are poor transmitters of seismic energy and instead act as a sponge to any ground motion. Due to their deep canyon walls, another potential hazard is landslides. Additionally, at the most northeast point of the Snake River Plain region sits the current location of the Yellowstone Volcanic Hotspot. Although this geological feature isn't technically included in the Snake River Plain, if it erupts, it has the potential for major devastation. As a major water source, the Snake River Plain supports a high level of agricultural development and houses the majority of Idaho's population. The Snake River and the many alluvial valleys 
contained within the plain provide water for 3 million acres of farmland. Livestock grazing is also extensive throughout this area. As a result from being formed from successive volcanic eruptions of the Yellowstone hotspot as it moved northward, the basaltic plain still retains a large amount of surface level heat flow. This allows Idaho to be one of the five states in the United States that currently have functional geothermal electricity generation.